All right, for reaction now, let's bring in Liz Harrington, former RNC national spokeswoman and Congressman Greg Stubbe, Republican from Florida. Good to see all of you here on this historic day. Congressman, I've got to go to you uh, off the top here, the president now heading to your home state. What are your thoughts on today and what you're seeing? Well, it's certainly a sad day for 74 million Americans who voted for the president uh, this last election cycle. And looking at what Joe Biden is going to do uh, in his first day, uh, it would make all conservatives very concerned about the safety and security of our nation. But certainly we welcome the president, President Trump, here in Florida. Uh, it's a great state. A lot of people obviously moved to Florida, 1,000 people a day, in fact, moved to Florida. So we're excited to have him here in Florida, but not excited. And 74 million Americans are not excited for a Joe Biden administration. Liz Harrington, your thoughts on that as well. Uh, we cannot forget uh, that there is a, a, a somberness, if you will, uh, to millions of those out there that may have thought, hey, look, w the president would get another term. This is not the case. Biden will be inaugurated in less than three hours from now. What do you say the mood is like today, Liz Harrington? Well, it certainly is a solemn day, but President Trump was very magnanimous when you heard him speak just now. When you think about the amount of injustice against himself and the past four years against his family and what the swamp has done to him, what all he accomplished despite all that, and yet he still had kind words to say against the people who have done this to him. And, you know, Congressman Stubbe is absolutely correct. Those 74 million plus uh, are not going to go anywhere either. They're very upset. They feel an injustice was done. I know an injustice was done against President Trump. He should still be the president. But as President Trump said, this isn't over. We'll see what happens in some shape or form in a new way. But I can tell you, those 75 million of us aren't going anywhere. And whoever does stand up for the truth, they will have great success in the in the Republican Party. President Trump is making headlines as being uh, the, I believe, the third uh, sitting president not to attend an inauguration, uh, this dating back to the 1800s. Um, Congressman Stubbe, I'm curious, are you attending the inauguration today? Why or why not? No, I'm not there. I'm here in Sarasota. Um, I, I, you know, look, everything that... Even the Democrats have said they didn't want him there. So I don't know why President Trump will go out of his way to be there today, given what is going on in our country, given the fact that all of the Democrats that will be there today voted to impeach him in the House uh, this last week. And he's going into a possible impeachment trial in the Senate. So I certainly don't blame him for not going. Uh, there's a lot of things historically that have happened this election cycle and this inauguration day. For the first time in the history of America's far back as I know and I have read, we have 25,000 National Guard soldiers guarding the inauguration. So during the summer where we had riots all across the country, Democratic mayors and Democratic governors refused the president sending the National Guard to help them and quell the disturbances. And the day that the president is leaving, suddenly it's okay to have 25,000 guardsmen guarding the Capitol. And I just think it's a very different uh, viewpoint than we've had over this summer with some of these Democratic mayors and Democratic governors. And I want to be clear, too, moving forward, you've got the inauguration, the, the, the ceremonial proceedings, the pop and circumstance that you're going to see with celebrities and such performances as well. But what you also will see is Biden expected to sign 17 executive orders just today in the Oval Office. So work starts today, and here's a look at some of what they include. One of those is stop border wall construction, end the Muslim travel ban, rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, end the Keystone XL pipeline, rejoin the World Health Organization, and of course the 100 days masking challenge to have to wear a mask in all uh, federal buildings. Uh, Liz Harrington, Biden sparing no time. Your thoughts? Well, also on that list was rolling back the deregulation, which I think is going to crush this very fragile economy where we have so many Democrat governors and mayors still not letting their citizens go back to work. It's going to have a very negative effect. I'm kind of surprised that this list of 17 isn't worse, uh, but I think it will get worse because they are going to try to roll back everything we did to make this country strong, to make us energy independent to build our economy. They're going to have open borders. It's very schizophrenic also because they say, oh, we're going to um, keep the ban on travel for the coronavirus, but we're going to lift 
the extreme vetting uh, to keep out terrorists from our country. It makes no logical sense, but that's what happens when you don't have to be accountable to the voters because the voters didn't elect him. We're, what, you, we have more troops than people in this inauguration. We have more flags than people because this is an illegitimate person, a fake candidate who didn't run a campaign, who doesn't actually have support. If they would have opened this up, we would have been very clear. There are more people at Joint uh, Andrews Bay Air Force Base today for President Trump than there would be for Joe Biden because he didn't have the support. There's no way he got 81 million votes. It's a fraud. Again, an opinion there shared by Liz Harrington. Obviously, the states have certified the results, and this is how you're seeing the inauguration. An opinion also shared by tens of millions of Americans. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. That opinion is strong. It, it is out there, and that is an acknowledged opinion, absolutely. Uh, Liz Harrington, thank you so much for sharing that. Congressman Greg Stubbe, uh, good to see you, and thank you so much for your time. Very big day, and we appreciate